Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself for the last 19 years. I'm the co-founder, executive vice president, and the chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm here to talk about some of the most important papers that were presented at the European Hematological Association's annual congress in 2024. The paper I'm going to talk about now was titled a phase two study of limited duration treatment with acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab in patients with treatment naive chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Let's start with the bottom line. Acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab resulted in an impressive 100% response rate at 14 months with deep reduction of the disease in the bone marrow in treatment naive CLL patients. Limited duration combination therapies are starting to reshape how chronic lymphocytic leukemia or CLL will be treated, but which combination of the best is going to be best is still unclear. This research was performed and presented by Dr. Jan Berger of MD Anderson Cancer Center. He was the principal investigator and it was presented at a post, as a poster at the Europe, European Hematologic Association's Annual Congress, or EHA 2024, in Madrid, in, uh, in Madrid. In the way of background, brutin tyrosine kinase inhibitors, or BTK inhibitors, like acalabrutinib, and similar with all approved BTKs inhibitors, induced durable remissions in most patients with CLL. But these remissions are almost always partial, or PRs. Therefore, treatment is classically continued indefinitely until intolerance or disease progression. The addition of a monoclonal antibody, rituximab to ibrutinib, did not lead to improved incomes in past studies, suggesting that adding a monoclonal antibody might not lead to new ways of treating the CLL and may not have led to a change paradigm. However, obinutuzumab is a very different and more potent anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody and therefore could make for a more synergistic change. And acalabrutinib is a different and better tolerated BTKI. So this ongoing phase two trial looks at treatment naive patients with CLL who received acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab in, attempt, in an attempt to see if this particular combination would allow for a powerful fixed duration therapy with the BTKI backbone with an antibody, similar to the already approved effective combinations of obinutuzumab or rituximab with venetoclax. Let's look at the methods and participants. The report presented at the European Hematologic Association meeting was only for the first 20 patients in this ongoing trial of untreated CLL patients who met the treatment criteria for the trial. Those patients received the standard dose of 100 milligrams of acalamutinib twice daily for 24 cycles or two years, combined with six months of obinutuzumab infusions starting in cycle three. Patients who did not achieve a complete remission after cycle 8 could receive an additional six months of obinutuzumab during cycles 9 through 14. Treatment was discontinued in all patients after 24 cycles. So what were the results? Well, let's look at the population that was being studied. The median age was a little lower than that typically seen in CLL, but Co commonly seen in clinical trials, and that was 65 years old, with a range ranging from 40 to 83. 10% had a lesion 17P or a TP53 mutation, and almost half, 45%, had unmutated IGHV. Almost two-thirds, 65%, had advanced stage disease, RI stage 3 or 4. The absolute lymphocyte count at baseline was only 30.8, so not that high, 
but the beta-2 microglobulin, or BTM, was elevated at 4.2 on average. Let's look at what happened. After a median follow-up of 16 months, 18 or 90% of the patients were still in the study. What about the two that weren't? Sadly, one patient died of complications from a presumed bacterial pneumonia, and one patient was taken off of the study due to cholecystitis or gallbladder inflammation and low neutrophil counts. The estimated two-year progression-free survival and overall survival for both, in both cases, was 94.4% based on the data of those two patients uh, no longer in the trial. Twelve patients were assessed after 14 months, with 25% in a complete response and 75% in a uh, partial remission, or PR, accounting for an overall response rate of 100%. Only one patient, however, reached undetectable measurable residual disease to the level of minus 4, or 1 in 10,000 cells. No patient had disease relapse or progression during the study period. The median level of bone marrow infiltration by CLL declined from an average of 83.6%, in other words, 83.6% of the cells in the bone marrow were CLL cells at baseline, compared to 0.14%, with the highest number in any assessed patient only being 0.45% after 24 months of therapy suggesting very significant falls in bone marrow involvement of the CLL with this therapy combination. So how can we summarize and conclude about this data? The preliminary data is impressive, 100% response rate with very impressive levels of CLL reduction in the marrow, but only one patient reached undetectable measurable residual disease. The number reaching UMRD is less than that seen with several venetoclax-based therapies, raising questions about just how long these remissions will hold. With other therapeutic combinations, we've learned that those who reach UMRD generally have the most durable responses. One patient died of infectious complications. The safety related to immune suppression and the duration of the response will have to be assessed as these patients continue to be monitored in the trial and will help determine the role of this combination versus the many others that are out there going forward. The link to the trial, a phase two study of limited time treatment with a calibrutinib plus obinutuzumab in patients with treatment naive chronic lymphocytic leukemia is given in the article accompanying this video. Thanks for your attention, stay strong, we are all in this together.